What's the weirdest thing a guest has done at your house? My homeless heroin addict ex-brother-in-law asked if he could do some laundry at my place and I agreed that would be okay as long as he understood this is my home and he's not welcome to hang around. I have a teenage son I'd rather not expose to heroin. Thank you. One day he texted that he needed to pick up his laundry and I said no problem. He never showed up. So I went to bed around midnight. Turns out after I went to bed, he let himself and his insane girlfriend in and they made themselves at home. Watching TV, taking a shower, eating snacks. I woke up to the sounds of a domestic taking place in my living room and a woman screaming for help. After dealing with all that and getting them removed from my property, I went to my bathroom where I found the entire bathroom covered in purple hair dye. It was on the floors, sink, the toilet, the mirror, the rugs, everywhere. Who comes into a house uninvited after midnight and dyes their hair? Don't do heroin kids. She may have been told he lived there. That happened to me once. After three days of hanging out she asked me back to her place. I ended up staying there on the weekends for 10 months. One night there was a knock on the door and she asked if I'd get the door. I opened the door to a class addressed airman that was her husband. I had no idea she was married. She had hidden all the pictures of them and everything. I felt so bad but from his perspective I was just a POS. Understandably so. I liked into the guy and found out he was military intelligence. I figured I was dead but that was 35 years ago now. Maybe after he calmed down he understood we had both been fooled. I had a birthday party for my friend at my apartment at the time. Another friend's husband ended up getting drunk and peeing in my hallway. I was like, WTF? Well, the bathroom was full and I couldn't make it to a bush in time. So, the next time he came over, I gifted him a small potted plant with a handmade men's room sign. Told him that now he has his own porta potty. This one chick I used to be kind of friends with in middle school came over to my house. We were just sitting on my living room couch watching TV when she just suddenly out of nowhere lifted the bottom of her shirt up and started blowing her nose into it. She did this like three or four times. I was like, come on now. We have tissues in the house and it didn't even occur to you to even ask for one. We're not anti-tissue extremists or anything. The image of that giant snot splotch all over the front of her shirt is seared into my retinas until the end of my days. While we were at work, a couple that were house guests for a few days rearranged our furniture and artwork. They wanted to surprise us when we returned home with their excellent taste in decorating. They sure did. My cousin used to come over my house a lot when I was a teenager. We were 7 months apart so we were pretty close growing up. When we 14-15 years old, he came over once with my auntie's friend's weird annoying son that he was forced to hang out with from time to time. It was 10am and I still had my PJs on. I tell my cousin I'll get dressed real quick and we'll go down the bike tracks soon. I go to my bedroom to change. When I am in my underwear the weird annoying boy walks straight in my room like he lived there and looked me up and down with a smile. I went mental screamed at him and called him a creep. My cousin bolts upstairs after hearing me scream, grabbed the boy by the scruff of his clothes, drags him out of my bedroom and threw him down the stairs. He wasn't seriously hurt but definitely terrified at this point and runs out of the house. According to my auntie's friend both myself and my cousin overacted and we bullied her son for no reason. My auntie bitch slapped her friend with so much force she was on the floor and quickly reminded her she'd protect her niece from any pervert regardless of their age. Not going to lie. It was pretty awesome watching my auntie floor her delusional friend. My wife and I had a housewarming party when we got our first house. Toward the end of the evening, a couple was getting ready to leave, and the wife suddenly couldn't find her purse. We turned the house upside down looking for it, and she started insisting that one of our other guests stole it. She was looking at my black friend and his wife when she said this. They're both lawyers and make more in a year than she'll make in her life. After nearly an hour of histrionics from the woman, they finally left months later. We were cleaning out the bathroom closet and found her purse buried under stuff in the bottom. I told her mother-in-law about it I'd known the M.I.L. since I was 14 and she was a good friend. She wasn't surprised. She told me that this girl had pulled that same stunt at two other parties that she knew of. There was no money in the purse so we just threw it away. A couple of years later during her first pregnancy the girl had a psychotic break and spent about a month restrained in a hospital bed. She's never been quite right since. Not that she was particularly right beforehand. 
my roommate in college had been dating a guy a few years older for several months. She asked if I minded if he spent the weekend and that they'd only be home in the evening since they had planned to be out and about experiencing the city. I said sure. Guy shows up and he's conversational and nice enough, except instead of an overnight band, he brings at least 10 huge fill to the brim laundry bags of dirty clothes. He immediately sets up shop in our laundry room and goes to town, literally does laundry all day and night. My roommate is visibly upset at this point because dude doesn't want to go hang out as planned. He just wants to watch movies and do laundry. She apologizes and says they'll be out all the next day. No big deal. She wakes me up the next morning and is hysterical. The guy is gone and has taken all of our cleaning supplies and snacks with him. She never heard from again. It was super creepy and bizarre. She probably didn't even know this guy's real name and never found out what his endgame was. Unless his endgame was simply use of a full-size washer and dryer pissed in the fridge all over turkey leftovers then bitched the toilet wouldn't flush. His GF at the time then proceeded to beat the shit out of him for doing it again with her prosthetic leg. Plot twist. I was the guest in their home. An ex-boyfriend of mine had this somewhat douche body that would come over occasionally. He'd bring some fire bud every time, so I didn't fuss about it. He just wasn't my favorite person. He brought his new girlfriend over once. At the time, I had five cats, all incredibly friendly. The friendliest of the group being my senior orange cat, Buddy. Upon entering my home and getting introduced, we head to the living room to roll up a blunt. She sat down on the couch and shortly after, Buddy jumped up on the armrest to greet the newcomer. Without missing a beat, she she exclaimed UCK and shoved him with an obscene amount of force to the ground. I immediately threw them out and flung an impressive string of obscenities her way as they slung to the car, who enters someone's home and assaults their pet. In what world is that acceptable? This guy turned my pots and pans into drums and started freestyle singing while all the girls were hitting cheers and harmonizing. I never wanted people to leave my place so quickly before. I keep a bunch of open mail and receipts on my kitchen counter, including bank statements and stock performance for my portfolios. One day I had somebody over and he said, what have you been buying? And suddenly reached for the pile of invoices, and the top one was my bank balances. I looked at him in disbelief and he said, I oh, it shouldn't be left where anybody could see it. Same guy went to use my desktop computer which was password protected and I said, that's locked. It's my personal computer that I don't let other people on. Guy said, when you leave the room I can hack into it wasn't invited back after moving to Florida from Ohio in the late 70s, we had an influx of visitors. Most were very close friends or family, but there were a few that saw this as a place to avoid paying for a motel. We had just bought a business, explained that we had to work long hours to get familiar with this new endeavor, and that we needed to concentrate heavily to be able to support our family as soon as we could. The first mooching visitor was our dentist and his wife that we had never met. We were on friendly terms in Ohio, but had never met socially, or felt we were good friends from home. Home. We had just walked in the door from a 12-hour workday, making dinner, and trying very hard to give my children some much-needed attention. When they arrived, they had at least four suitcases, and the look I gave my husband indicated I thought he was to blame for letting this happen. We hadn't even told the kids we were getting company, and quietly instructed our 12-year-old son to do a quick tidy in his room, and grab what he would need to bunk with his 6-year-old brother for a few days. Being a twin auger, you can imagine how well this was received again. I quickly changed the bedding, cleaned the bathroom and put out our only for company towels. While my husband fed the kids several times MRS, dentist informed us not to worry about them. They had stopped for dinner or maybe they weren't in the mood for hot dogs and mac and cheese. Mr. Dentist announced that he would drink a cup of coffee after the long drive today. If I had some made, of course. The first thing I did before I even emptied my now painful bladder was make a fresh pot of coffee. The rest of the week was as they say, history. To shorten this long story, Story. The highlights of Mr. and Mrs. Dentist's week-long vacation to Florida, we were told on day 8, was the worst they'd ever had. Our children drove them crazy. The dog peed in the room. We totally ignored them, and didn't even go to dinner with them one time. They had made appetizers, bought an expensive bottle of wine even lit my candles, thinking we would at least be sociable one evening. MRS. Dentist went on to say, our kids snuck in and ate half the hot herbs, ruined her pretty platter display. My husband and I had driven too, hardly running trucks to Miami to trade them for new ones.
and drove back. I had never driven a 7-speed truck and often popped stressfully the whole way home across Alligator Alley. We stopped for Kentucky Fried Chicken for the kids' dinner because I was so exhausted I couldn't cook. Needless to say, as my children sat sobbing on the sofa thinking they were really in trouble, I lost it. I went to the counter and picked up the phone book and threw it across the family room. Find a motel and get the heck out of my house. They were packed and gone within 15 minutes. I apologized to the kids and told my son he would never have to give up his bedroom again. He never did. And we never heard from our old dentist and his wife again. Came over for dinner, liked my cooking eats and then proceeded to devour a week's worth of leftovers. I served her a man-sized meal big enough for me as a 185 centimeters, 100 kilogram man, and she ate easily five times that amount. It was ducking bizarre. Another chick came to my house once and dropped a giant shit in the toilet that went about 15-20 centimeters above the water and didn't couldn't flush. I was as impressed as I was angry. My friend's new boyfriend I'd never met him before came over with her for dinner. There were eight of us. He drank a lot. He went to the bathroom before dessert. About five minutes after he came back, he spoke to her and she said they needed to go as he wasn't feeling well. They left. When the next person went to the bathroom, they came back recoiling in horror. The new boyfriend had puked up his entire dinner and a vast amount of red wine all over the bathroom. Everywhere. Walls. Floors. All over my full basket of spare toilet rolls. I cleaned it up. When I next saw my friend. I mentioned it. We had a totally ordinary conversation about it. Later that day, she deleted me on FB and I never saw her again. Mystifying. Had a cookout for my buddy's fright when I bought my first house. One of my close friends brought one of his buddies along. After going inside for a second to get a beer out of the fridge I see that friend with my carton of blueberries in his hand throwing them at my bathroom door. Easy to say right after we got in a fight and I kicked him off my property. Haven't seen him since that day. I was hosting a cocktail party and one guest gave an unsolicited home inspection. He checked out the chimney, tested the fire alarm, distance between studs in the wall. The final straw was my sleeping son waking up to this guest in his room inquiring about the rocking chair in the bedroom. This guy started opening all the drawers and cabinets in my kitchen asking if I had candy. I told him no and he said, lame. Then he turned on my TV and asked if I had any video games. I told him, flatly, I don't. He asked if I had any games on my phone. I was getting kind of fed up at this point and told him he had to leave my house. He told he had to put on his jacket first or else he'd catch a cold. Once he finally went outside he kiyot asking me to watch how fast he could run in his new shoes. This guy was a real weirdo got a prostitute over. This was years ago when I lived in a share house. My roommate and a friend of his got drunk. My roommate eventually ended up going to bed and he told his friend to sleep on the couch rather than driving home. The next morning we woke up and discovered that he'd called up the prostitute. They had sex in the bathroom and left a good awful mess. It was a long time before he got invited over again. A gentleman doesn't tell good since I'm not that let me tell you a story. Once upon a time I had to move for a job. Since I had to move a long distance I decided to go all out and hire movers. Went first class even though I only had this small one bedroom apartment. Part of the issue is I had this massage chair that was nice but extremely heavy. So I called the company up. They sent a rep out and quote me no big deal. Now during this process I made it very clear this massage chair is expensive and this is why I am hiring you. If this is an issue please let me know. This this is a very large and well-known moving company so this guy is like no problem. We do this all the time. Quote comes back. Something like 5k. It's a lot but moving is a lot of work and the chair is worth about 5k itself. Anyhow, moving day arrives and three people and the truck show up ready to move. Two guys who actually do the moving and a woman who takes inventory and directs. So far so good. They literally pack everything in like an hour and then save the massage chair until the end. One of the guys then asks me if I have any tools. My whole apartment is packed up. I told him I didn't. The other dude was able to find a few screwdrivers in the truck so they start attempting to take it apart without knowing what they are doing. At one point the guy who asked about the tools, a skinny guy in his mid-thirties was poking around the back and suddenly the back falls on him. Keep in mind I the chair is about 500 pounds and this section was probably 100 of that which I was able to partially catch because I was standing there. So I then said do you even know why you are doing and he said number at this point the women, not wanting 
wanting to further damage this or have to deal with an injured co-worker calls her office to see what to do. They then demand an extra 500 to get a specialist out to do this. I immediately denied this, showed them the quote which included the chair, so they finally figure the chair out and load it up. Now being a nice guy and not wanting my stuff ruined I tipped each of them 50 bucks and thanked them for helping out. Then as they finished we had to get one more approval from their office so we are all waiting for the office to get back to us just sitting on the floor in this one bedroom apartment when the woman says can I use your bathroom? Yeah, no problem I said. She's in there 5 minutes, 0.10 minutes, 0.15 minutes, 0.20 minutes and then at about 25 minutes she comes out and says hey was your toilet broken? No. Why? I replied. Well it is now. You should call maintenance. I am like WTF I live in a big building in a downtown metro. There are tons of public restrooms in the building. If you had to do something serious you could easily have gone in there. So I replied no. You should call maintenance. Just go downstairs and talk to the front desk. She went down to get help and then they all left. I waited in the apartment for two hours building up the courage to open the toilet seat to see what the problem was. Finally when I did I saw a massive dump next to a huge wad of TP with blood everywhere. The building had to call in a specialist to pump the toilet. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos.